Hey folks, it's Brian and I'm going to be working on my junkie truck. This is episode 33. I'm putting the power steering pump back in. So, uh, yeah, workbench is a mess. Long story. So that's the rebuilt power steering pump. That's the bracket. That's what I'm going to do first. And, yeah, this is just better than working out there in the sun where it's 90 F that. So let me get set up. So it must be this. All right. So I apologize for the aerial noise. I, I live near a major airport in Houston, Texas, and the airlines sell disturbing the peace for a few hundred dollars a seat. So we're going to apply some thread lock. I'll put a link for this in the description. Um, if you use the links, you'll pay the same price that you would have otherwise paid, but you can. Help me out, I earn a small commission when you use links to purchase things on Amazon. Small being the operative word, but it adds up and I really do appreciate your support. Now this is a rebuilt pump. I will put a link in the description to a new pump as well as a rebuilt pump. These, This did come from Rock Auto, but uh, I'm gonna link to Amazon because Rock Auto doesn't pay commission. And yeah, that's just how it is. So I'm going to get these hand tight. Look at that hand. Now, oh, that's interesting. That is a half inch lug for tightening the belt. Kind of surprised it's this first smart thing I've seen on this truck. This truck embodies everything about Ford that gave Ford a bad name. All right, so we need to put this back on. Let's look at it, make sure there's nothing obviously wrong with it. It looks good enough. Didn't expect it to be that loose. Okay, so that can go on a little bit more. So I'm going to get the setup for this. All right, that's the right one. that that's all it took 
it is flush, so it's installed. All right. So the next step's out on the truck. Um, so let me get set up for that, and we'll be out there. All right, folks. I apologize that uh, it may be a little difficult to see in here. Um, it still looks like three eighths to me. Um, start by putting this hose back in here before something jumps in here that doesn't belong in here. Well, I'm going to go get something to spray that out with. There's a little piece of gunk down in there, and I think it's gone at this point. So I'm going to start this by hand. And just see how... Get it? Guess that's about it as far. And then it is a half inch flare wrench. Flare nut wrench. Get cozy because you can only get one uh, face at a time on this axis. figure out how this hose is held on so I'm gonna mess with that I'm gonna stop the camera while I do it. Alright that was an Oedeker clamp down there. There we go. So an Oedeker clamp is sometimes called a pinch clamp. Uh, it's something a factory would have used and the way you work you get rid of it is you get a pair of sharp diagonal cutters and you cut the uh, pinch off and then it just pulls right off which is what that happens. So, 3 8 power stereo return line is probably the original hose. And let's see. You know, it might have been serviceable, but I see some delamination in here. It's not worth the hassle of trying to replace it uh, with a pump on the truck. So, I don't think I have this, but I'm going to go look and see if I do. I'll be right back. All right, 
What should be relatively easy and quick is not. Southwest has made a bunch of noise flying overhead. Um, so I don't have hose clamps for this and uh, obviously I can't reuse the ones that came off. So they'll be in tomorrow and uh, until then there just isn't a whole lot that I can do um, on this project because this one will be much easier to do with the pump out of my way. So um, that's kind of it for tonight unfortunately. Um, so I'll pick this up tomorrow and um, once I get the hose clamps in and then we'll get this thing put back together. Won't be able to run it because the next uh, the next piece of this puzzle is going to be um, changing to a 3G alternator and then I'm going to put all the belts back on uh, while we're in here. Yeah, bearings on the water pump seem good so I'm not messing with that. All right. Alright folks, it's another day. I've got my hose clamps came in. I ordered these on Amazon. I wanted something a little bit nicer. I'll put a link to these in the description on the video. Anyway, I need to put these on that hose, get it secured down there, and uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Alright, um, the visuals on this probably aren't going to be that great because this is really not good access. That's right. And now for the fun part. access to this. Well, oh, that didn't work either. And everything under here is covered with grease and grime. switch to power all right hopefully this will go better In case you're curious how I did this, impact driver, flex extension, 5 sixteenths, and a quarter inch um, driver. Alright, so let's try and get this in here. Let's 
just no easy way to ever get anything done with this. Now, I'm going to put thread lock on this adjustment bolt because the basic idea is um, you can skip the thread lock on anything. You don't care if it gets loose. Go get a hose clamp and I'll be right back. All right, now 
for my next Houdini-like maneuver. Alright, I'm going to tighten this a little bit. There we go. Let me see if I can get this into a better spot. So let's pull some of this weight off. to be an interference fit right now because otherwise it's going to slide down where it doesn't belong and be an even bigger pain in the ass. Just no access. That's a bad idea. You know, it would have been so difficult to put this here or to thread it in or to move it over here, but no, no, they probably attach this hose and then drop it down and attach it. It's just idiot ass engineering. That external reservoir would have made this a whole, whole lot easier. And the height of the the um, grill just you you can't lean over. You have to stand on something. This is an asinine fucking 
design, not designed to ever be worked on. So that's 11 sixteenths. down so it'll stop moving. another wrench. All right, let's see if we can get these last this last little bit. Should be good there. Alright, 
doesn't seem very tight. add some fluid to it and uh, then we'll call it a day. All right, so um, the specs call for type F transmission fluid, so that's what it's going to get. And fortunately, this is a nice old transmission fluid, so it's not very expensive. It's not very fancy. And I'm going to overfill it because I know it needs to be bled. That's probably a good starting spot, and uh, we'll just stick that there because we're not even remotely done with that. All right, so that's it for today, and uh, it's starting to get warm out. I don't like to work on the truck when it's 100 out, so I'm going to stop and post this video. The next video is going to be removing the old alternator. It's a 1G alternator with an external regulator. I'm going to put replace it with a 3G alternator. So stay tuned for that.